pressure, how to correctly differentiate among atmospheric, total, gauge, manometric, partial and vapor pressure. A typical mistake that chemical engineering students sometimes make in calculations is to use the wrong type of pressure. This video aims to clarify when each one is to be used. Let's begin with the simplest type of pressure, atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is the force per unit area exerted by the weight of a column of air above a measuring point. Here the column of air is shown above a person. Atmospheric pressure is around one atmosphere at sea level, but its value fluctuates. Pressure can be expressed in various units. The unit factors for converting from one set of units to another can be found in most academic texts. Some examples of unit factors are shown here. It is the pressure that is reported in weather forecasts. This map shows the isobars expressed in millibars. In chemical engineering calculations, one at atmosphere is usually taken for the value of atmospheric pressure. Let's now turn to another type of pressure, overpressure. Fluids flowing in a pipe can have pressures that exceed atmospheric pressure. This overpressure can be measured by gauges or by manometers. The choice of measuring device depends on the pre precision required. Gauge pressure is the pressure measured by a gauge. This device measures the pressure relative to atmospheric pressure, i.e. it is calibrated against atmospheric pressure. Therefore, a Borden manometer disconnected from a vessel or a pipe and left, for instance, loose on top of a table, will give a zero reading. But recall that there is a column of air on top of that gauge. So, there is pressure despite the zero reading. This is why gauges are said to measure overpressure. For this reason, we also have the concept of absolute or total pressure, which exists to take into account atmospheric pressure. It is somewhat common to find pressure expressed as bar sub A, bar sub G, PSI sub A, PSI sub G in some texts. The subscript A is for absolute and the subscript G is for gauge, thus indicating absolute pressure or gauge pressure. Overpressure can also be measured with other devices. The manometer shown here consists of a hollow U-shaped tube with one end connected to a pipe under pressure and the other end open to the atmosphere. Inside the U-shaped tube is the manometer fluid. If the pipe is under pressure that differs from atmospheric pressure, then the height of manometer fluid in the two arms of the U-shaped tube will be displaced relative to each other. The displaced height, H, indicated in the drawing, is directly related to the pressure difference between the pipe and the atmosphere, in other words, to the man manometric pressure. Now we consider the concept of vapor pressure. It is easier to understand if you keep in mind the phase diagram of a pure substance such as the one shown here. It is also important to keep in mind that the equilibrium lines separating the various phases, solid, liquid and vapor, constitute a succession of infinitely closely spaced points that have been obtained from experimental studies in the laboratory. These points correspond to an x-coordinate temperature and to a y-coordinate pressure in the case of a PT phase diagram such as the one considered here. This information is characteristic for a given pure substance and does not change with time or with the geographic location of the lab in which it was determined, and definitely not with fluctuations in atmospheric pressure. A certain line in this diagram is of particular interest for many applications in chemical engineering. The equilibrium line between the liquid and vapor phase that has been highlighted in red. This line is made up of an infinite number of closely spaced points whose coordinates x, y are boiling point temperature, vapor pressure. This also gives us an easy way to remember the definition of vapor pressure. It is the y-coordinate of each point on the red line whose x-coordinate on the same line corresponds to the substance's boiling point temperature. Technically, the vapor pressure of a substance at a given temperature is the pressure of the substance vapor in thermodynamic equilibrium with its condensed phase in a closed system. It cannot be emphasized enough that the vapor pressure depends only on temperature and is characteristic for a given pure substance. This is why some academic texts put the temperature in brackets next to the symbol used for the vapor pressure of substance A. The purpose of this is to remind the user that the vapor pressure is temperature dependent. Bear in mind that once you've identified the substance and know its temperature, it is a simple matter of looking up the corresponding vapor pressure in appropriate tables. Vapor pressure is independent of all the other data provided in a given problem statement. In this course, the vapor pressure will be denoted by P sub A 
star T. But please remember that other designations may be used in books. Lastly, we look at what pressure, partial pressure means. We only come across this type of pressure when we are dealing with a mixture of gases or vapors. Partial pressure is calculated using the equation shown, with P sub A denoting the partial pressure and Y sub A denoting the molar fraction of component A in the gaseous mixture. From this definition we can deduce that the total pressure equals the sum of the partial pressures of the component gases in the mixture. More technically, partial pressure is the pressure each component gas would exert if it alone occupied the volume of the mixture at the temperature of the mix mixture. Finally, we would like to address the following question. Can vapor pressure and partial pressure be equal? Vapor pressure and partial pressure are two very different quantities which can in one particular instance have equal values. This explains why students sometimes confuse them. The situation in question arises when a pure liquid, more or less volatile, is in equilibrium with a gas. A typical scenario involves observing as an equilibrium is established between pure liquid water and dry air in a closed vessel at constant temperature. Initially at time zero, the air is dry, which means that it does not contain any water at all. Since the molar fraction of water vapor in the dry air is initially zero, its partial pressure will also be zero at time zero. However, the vapor pressure of water depends only on temperature. As a result, at first the vapor pressure and partial pressure of the water are very different. Little by little water vapor evaporates into the air and the humidity of the air becomes higher as a result. In other words, the molar fraction of water in the air increases with every passing moment and thus the partial pressure as well. Note that the partial pressure can never exceed the vapor pressure which means that in the region just above the liquid surface, the partial pressure will vary from zero initially to the vapor pressure at equilibrium.